Hi, Dad. Welcome back to another episode of Dave and Andy's Honest About Life. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Andy. How are you? I am well. Thank you very much. We received our first bit of snow this past weekend here of the whole winter season, dating back to, you know, even last year. Uh, can you believe it? You just got your first snow now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We've got some we can ship your way. We're really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I I think about, um, you know, those poor folks in California who, uh, you know, geographically speaking, you know, and you could speak more intelligently to this is why, uh, you know, why are they seeing this? What are they calling it? They're calling it um, the, the weather that's coming in, Pineapple Express or something. Oh, yeah, the in. Pineapple Express. It, that's a very typical, um, it, it, it's basically from the Hawaiian Islands. And that, that trough of moisture comes flowing into the West. And it just gets continuous, you know, that it gets on a, a track and you get on to a cycle of every seven days or something. A little ripple comes along that Pineapple Express and causes tons of moisture for the West Coast, which they still can use. I, I, I still say a lot of the reservoirs are low, so they could use a lot of rain. Yeah. You know, the I think the politics and I know you and I, we, we touch on this pretty much nearly every topic we talk about but you know now they're talking about how to capture more of that runoff uh, in times of drought you're taking advantage of that in times of drought and um they, they just can't win yeah that's something we were talking off camera about is the infrastructure you know there there's infrastructures that that take care of that runoff and I, you've been out to california and you've seen their great big um, levees that they have that carry the runoff water, right? And those conduits are, um, you know, they're built for a certain amount of moisture. But if too much comes, then they got they got problems. They start getting above where they thought that that water could get. But um, it is it's it's something that in, the engineering goes into all of that. And you know, you go back to Katrina and and uh, New Orleans. And you think, man, the engineering involved to have a city that's below sea level is amazing. And, you know, it, 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 was, it became part of the problem, but now they've rebuilt that. And I don't think it's ever, you know, I shouldn't say ever because you never know, but it just seems like they've got that under control. And that's, that's amazing engineering. I, I really respect all the engineers in this country that have to deal with their cities, their, their townships, you know, uh, they have to know what their little area in this world is and what it needs. And, and they engineer all these things that um, seem to cover all their problems. Yeah, I think, I think you called them, um, I think you call them levees. I, th I think of levees, like you said, to hold back the water in places like Louisiana and some of those places, Mississippi, those that are below right. sea level. These are spillways or... or um, yeah, I can't think of the term. I, I've yeah, heard it a gazillion times, but I can't think of the term that they yeah, use. Yeah, these big concrete waterways that, that pull the water away, like... Right, 90% of the time they're dry, you yeah. know, but they need to be there for that 10% of the time when they get torrential amounts of rainfall yeah um, yeah dang it i wish i could think of the term. We, call, <laughs> we call them storm sewers you know and yeah in in minnesota but yeah you know and here they're in the open you know they, they leave a, they leave all that running water in the open and you know you've seen problems where kids have gotten swept away in those things whereas in our storm sewer situation where we are the thing we have to worry about is getting hit by a manhole cover yeah you know they have so much force that water has so much force and it's in a restricted water. area a smaller conduit and it just blows the these things up in the air it, i would hate to be around when one of those comes off but we've seen video of it all the time but i've never been close to one just to experience that uh that explosion of the water coming up you know speaking of california what and maybe california is the answer to this question but what is if you could go to one other state next what state in the nation would you go to? To live my life? Like no, if I no, had to live it over again? Where would where, where, where most like to go? You know, I, because of all the stuff that's there that I haven't seen, California. Would it be? Yeah, because there's some interest. The Redwood Forest, I haven't, I haven't seen that. I haven't experienced 
going through a tree, you know, where they have the, the tunnels yeah. right through the redwood, the giant redwoods. Yeah. I would love that. That would be kind of cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. I could see that. It's a big state. There's a lot of diversity. A lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. The, the wine, the vineyards that they have, you know, the, the climbing, uh, just all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So uh, one of these times I'm going to ask you to answer a bunch of questions uh, just like that. And maybe we'll devote an entire session to, uh, to those <laughs> kinds of questions. But uh, for now, let's leave it at that. And then uh, we'll bring up the next topic uh, here uh, next time around next session, which will be, you know, thinking more about, you know, your parents, your own parents and how they would respond to what's going on in the world today. That's an interesting yeah. question. It really is. You know, it, it goes to try to figure out how, did I know my parents that well, but these are very interesting questions. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So thank you, dad. Love you. Yep. Love you, pal.